Welcome to Hayes Outdoors and Tractors. This is our first official video um, on our new channel. Uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, specifically uh, showing the Rural King RK24. Um, I purchased this uh, approximately eight months ago. I've got about 112 hours on it right now. Um, and the reason I decided to start this was I went through YouTube and searched for RK24 before I purchased this. Um, it was probably a good year prior to me buying it. Uh, I did research and looked at all the different makes and models. I'm not brand specific on this channel at all. Um, I think everybody has the right to do whatever they want with whatever they want, but um, I chose this as the best tractor for my, my family and myself. Um, obviously I purchased it at Royal King. It's an RK24 look with the loader, the backhoe. I also got uh, the 54 inch granite grapple and a three point finish mower for the back. Um, this is a 24 horsepower, 18 horsepower, uh, 18 PTO horsepower. Um, and what we're going to do today is just take you around and show you the tractor, um, some of the likes, dislikes that I have with it. Um, but as I said, when I was searching for uh, research on this, there was very limited on uh, YouTube videos on the actual RK. There was only a handful of people that actually did videos on the uh, Royal King tractors. And I think that's partly because they're relatively new. Royal King only come into our area within the last two to three years. Um, and to be quite honest, I didn't even know they had tractors until someone said, why don't you look at those tractors down there? So I stopped down, I did look at it, and uh, I did stop and I looked at all the other brands. Um, and everyone, you know, relatively makes a, a decent tractor. Um, it has the uh, Yarmour uh, three liter, three cylinder diesel uh, in the tractor. That's the, the power plant for it, uh, which is pretty much most of the tractors have that nowadays. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take you through a little closer, show you the machine up close. Uh, we'll show you the engine, show you all the controls, and uh, some of the likes and dislikes of where they're located, uh, the operator station. Um, there are some things using it now for 112 hours. I definitely have some likes and dislikes about it. Um, also on our channel, we're going to have not just this tractor. Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, some of our farm tractors. Um, I have two Oliver. Uh, farm tractors, pony wheel tractors that me and Bryson, as you will meet later, um, hopefully are going to redo together. Uh, one was my grandfather's farm tractor, one was my uncle's. Um, I'm still farming with one of them, and we're hoping to redo them um, so someday they can be my son. Um, and also, we have a 6211 Zetter uh, that we use to do most of our main farming at uh, 62 horsepower diesel Zetter. So, Without further ado, let's show you the tractor. Okay, we're at the operator platform uh, on the RK24. Um, there's a couple different, uh, and a lot of the tractors, uh, a lot of the setups are pretty close. Some are a little bit more user friendly. Um, some of them have the uh, front loader control down here uh, where you can still enter and exit off of this machine on both sides. This one does not have that. Um, you have to more or less get on from the left side unless you want to try to get in between here. Okay, so here we are at the operator uh, center, uh, the operating uh, seat from the tractor. Um, on your main gauge cluster, it's very basic. Um, you do have some lights up here and over here. Um, your PTO light, your emergency brake light, uh, oil, all of those, uh, the typical uh, uh, notification lights, they would light up obviously. Um, you have a tachometer, um, then you have your hours uh, down here under your tachometer. I'm at like 112.5 right now on this machine. Um, you have your four ways down here and I've seen this on a lot of the subcompacts are all basically the same. You have your turn signals here up and down. You have the horn here in the middle and this switch right here is your headlights. As you come down around, this is your emergency brake. You press on the brake, lift up, release the brake, and this stays in place. This is your emergency brake. This next lever beside is going to be your cruise control. Um, cruise control doesn't necessarily, it will not let you set this machine um, just for knowledge of, of using it. Uh, when you're mowing or doing anything, um, it will not let you set the cruise control at full uh, speed. Uh, it has a, a certain setting 
that whenever you let off of it, it will drop down and then go on to cruise control. But it is very handy. I do use it uh, cutting grass. You just kind of got to watch because if, if your yard's really rough, um, the cruise control probably isn't the thing that you're going to want to use because it beats you around pretty good. Um, on around you have your key. Now on your key, uh, there's two settings on the key. I didn't realize this. They did tell me uh, at Royal King when I picked the machine up, but uh, for the first month that I had the machine, I didn't. I was wondering why it seemed like it was smoked a little bit when I started it. Um, there is a warm up for the glow plugs, um, but I knew it was there. I know they had told me, but it, it seemed like it didn't want to turn, um, and I didn't want to break the key, obviously. So I was very, you know, very ginger with it. Um, but eventually, for some reason, just one day, it just started turning. And so what you do is you turn the key to the left, and a curly cue comes on here that shows the glow plugs and you hold that. Now that lasts uh, on this machine about 30 to 35 seconds uh, for sure. Um, so once that uh, the curly cue is off, uh, it shuts down, then all you have to do is turn your key to the right, you'll see the gauges come up, go down to empty, and come back up to full, and then the machine's ready to start. Now to start this machine, you have to have the emergency brake engaged on the machine and have it depressed or have it locked and be sitting on the seat. There's a safety switch on the seat. Um, a lot of the times, even though you're not supposed to do it, if I need to start it, I'll push down on the seat and then you can throttle. This is your manual throttle. The nice function uh, of this RK tractor and some of the tractors have them, some of them don't, some of them it's a, an option, is the power assist, um, which means as you step on the pedals, um, your forward pedal and your reverse pedal, um, the, the harder you push the pedal, just like in your car, the faster the tractor goes, the more power it puts to the tractor. Um, now if you're doing uh, brush hogging, some people call it bush hogging, around here we call it brush hogging, um, or you're using anything three point that you want constant RPMs to be able to be cutting. Um, I have a finished mower that runs uh, on a three point on the back of this. Um, then you pull your uh, throttle down and it holds your RPMs at whatever uh, rotations per minute that you want. Um, I usually run this, I've never found a problem running it between 2500 and 3000 RPMs. Um, of all the research that I've done on these, they say these little tractors you're supposed to run them pretty close to high end on the uh, rotations per minute. Uh, when you're running them, um, but the um, auto uh, throttle on these is really nice with loader work. When you're doing uh, front end loader work, um, it, it's really nice. Um, it's also nice when you're moving around certain uh, items in your yard. You can throttle down, throttle up just by the push of a button. Um, okay, so moving up above the throttle, this is your electronic PTO. Um, it's a yellow button push in, twist, release, and now your PTO is engaged. And just push it to disengage it. Um, so this is, there is also a switch that we're going to go through on the fender that engages your PTO, whether it be uh, your mid, your mid and rear, or your rear PTO. So moving along, uh, you have your front end loader. Um, it's here, this is a, a separate, um, if, if you look at some of the Royal King uh, front end loader handles, joysticks. Uh, they have the round ball. This is a special one because I opted when I bought this machine to get the third function valve because I knew I was going to buy uh, a grapple with it. So what they did was they took the old one off. They do give you all the parts. Um, came in a box along with the hoses which I'll show you what they did with the third function valve. Um, so how this functions is um, up, down, up, curl, and back and then when you push this button and do either your side or uh, right to left curl that actually opens and closes the grapple and then as soon as you release this button you're back to being able to curl and retract. Um, one other function on this especially um, I have a three-year-old son he loves running on the tractor with us um, like I said you're gonna meet him pretty soon uh, this is a safety feature it's a push down it locks us. So if I'm off the tractor or something and he would happen to bump this um, walking alongside or something that the loader will not function at all 
um, once this is down. The bad side of that is, <laughs> and I've done this a few times, when you lock it, forget about it, and then you go and you grab it. Um, you definitely don't want to break this. Um, Royal King told me this is like a $500 part right here, so we definitely don't want to uh, break it. But, like I said, it's just a simple up and down, and it's a safety feature for uh, so the, the bucket won't come down whenever you don't want it to. Okay, as we're moving along, um, to get under the hood, uh, the latch is down here, uh, right at the bottom, above the passenger side tire. All you do is pull down, pops your hood right up, you lift the hood up, and it automatically locks down into a notch over here. Um, as you can see, looking down in here, um, you don't have a lot of room to work. Um, they put a lot of motor radiator air filter in a very small area um, the one bad thing that I seen uh, that it seems to me um, I'm just used to the old farm tractors that you could just throw the you know, farm tractors are notorious for having dead batteries so <clears throat> you know you want to jump it the battery for this unit is clear down inside here um, straight down in it is a little cumbersome to get to um, but they did um, make it relatively easy to get into this. Now whenever I do any maintenance on this, I take the front end loader off. Literally it takes two minutes and it's off and away from the machine. And that opens up your whole front. And all you have to do is take these two screws off right here. And the front piece comes off and these sides just slide out and it exposes the engine, the radiator, the battery, all your air filter. It, once you get to that point with those two screws, you can actually access pretty much everything on the engine compartment. Okay, moving along. Um, I opted on, as I said, on this, uh, on this machine to get the third function valve. Uh, I suggest if, if anyone's possibly thinking getting a grapple or anything that might need a third function valve, get it when you buy the machine because when you buy it after market or after the fact it usually costs more that's what I was getting from all the prices that I had got I can tell you this this is the Royal King third function valve for the RK tractor this is what it comes with this is how it came out of the RK garage um, don't quote me but it's right around six hundred and fifty dollars most of these third function valves are eight hundred and more uh, for other brands um, so I and then also you have to pay um, and installation fee which is right around $200 um, and that's with any third function valve 200 to 250 I want to I want to say it cost me about $220 but well worth it they have to reroute all the lines they have new lines they give you the old lines that were the original lines for the tractor they come with it um, so if you ever want to take it off but they reroute this and also right here is your electric it runs back right here under the hood and runs back to your uh, lever so and you have two quick connects right here so whenever you disconnect the front end loader you have to unconnect these two uh, these two different uh, plugs uh, this plug actually stays on the loader um, you have to unplug right here and then this part stays on the loader and then that goes down inside so uh, I wish when I bought the tractor I wish they would have drilled a hole or give me some kind of access because as you can see this is wearing uh, I'm gonna do something with that put some rubber grommets and and probably drill a hole in here so it's not rubbing through um, because I definitely you know I bought the tractor about eight nine months ago I definitely don't want to be replacing that uh, anytime soon so the third function valve it, it works flawlessly I love it um, it was well worth give or take $850 that I paid extra to get it. Uh, moving along, the front of the RK tractors, they come standard. There's a lot of things that the RK tractors come standard with that other ones are an option with. Um, so that's what I, that's kind of what swayed me a little bit also. And I'll go through a couple of those, uh, those accessories that, that you get with it. And they are pricey accessories. Um, your front, uh, front bucket is quick connect. There's your two levers on a pad right here comes up under this lip and that's what connects the bucket and you have two pins that go down in the bottom once you hook up lift the bucket up twist back just push down and you can hook up to your bucket 
Um, there's many times uh, that I'm switching between my grapple and my bucket, um, depending on if I'm leveling um, or hauling dirt or whatever. <laughs> the only thing that's, and it's not really a pain, but the, the one that is a process, unhooking and hooking from the bucket is no problem. The grapple, you have to hook up your two hydraulic lines, which are right here. Here's your male and your female. They're down at the bottom, and you have two lines coming off your grapple, which is what your third function is that makes the grapple actually open and close. So that's pretty much how I had uh, this machine set up. We're going to walk around uh, to the other side. And Okay, so a couple things back here at the operator station on the opposite side. Um, these are your main controls. Now, as I was saying, some of the things I like and dislike about this machine, it's not really a dislike, it, it's just, it's one of those things that you learn as you go. Um, you have your four-wheel drive on and off. That's pretty self-explanatory. You have low and high. There's no medium on this machine. Um, I will tell you, low. when you lock this into low, there's, uh, it will almost stall itself out before it stops. The power is really impressive for a, for a little tractor. Um, then you have your PTO. So you have your mid, which would be for your belly mower. You have your mid and rear, if you have a belly mower and a rear attachment, something uh, running in the back, and then you have your strictly rear to put it to your PTO into the back. Um, moving down here. This is your differential lock, where it locks both back tires together. Um, I will tell you, I've used that a couple times. It does work very well. Uh, once you, you know, even in four-wheel drive, you start spinning. If you push down on this uh, with your heel, um, I would you definitely want to stop the tractor, push down on it, continue, give it more gas. And once it locks those back tires together, I've only been one time that I've had this tractor stuck that I actually had to use the bucket to get itself out. So this is your, your belly mower. Uh, this is your height control, as you can see, one to four inches. Uh, this is your speed for your PTO or for your three-point drop. Um, if you want your accessories in the back to drop quickly, you turn it one way. If you want them to go slow, you turn it the other way. So this is your three-point drop speed. Um, moving up here, this is your uh, seat adjustment. You can move it up, you can move it back. Um, <clears throat> also, it has flip down armrests. I didn't really care. I didn't have a preference on these. Um, I've seen them on a lot of the videos that I watched. I'm glad I have them. I will say that. You use them a lot. Uh, and I'm very, very glad that, that they have these on this seat. The seat's well built. Um, we've uh, put some abuse on it already and, and it's held up very well. Over to the uh, <coughs> right side of the tractor, this is your PTO lift and lower. So this is li uh, lower and this is lift. Um, it does not have a lock like some of the tractors have. Like I said, um, this is a good machine, but it's, it's not one of the premium machines that, as I said, has a joystick on the, on the fender or a lot of these ones will have a lock or have a set on uh, the three-point to where you can drop it to the exact same height every single time. This does not have it. So uh, you just got to kind of watch. I'm always turned around watching anyways if you're, if you're doing any kind of plowing or uh, tilling or anything. You're behind watching the whole time anyways, so I just kind of adjust it. It comes with a cup holder and a 12 volt accessory plug. The handle, um, I was like, well, why'd they put a handle on there? Believe me, you use this. I, I use it quite a bit when I'm leaning over to look behind the, the machine. Uh, that's about all for this. Now we're going to go back to the tobacco section. <clears throat> As I said, I opted to get the backhoe section. It is a $5,000 option from Royal King. Um, I can tell a lot of people have mixed feelings on this, and whether you do or don't, I'm not one to tell anybody what you need, what you don't need. Uh, all I'm saying is, for the work that I do, I use this a lot since I've got the machine in eight months. Um, I've done a lot of uh, jobs for friends. I've done a lot for my, up on my farm. I've taken care of my property you'd be surprised how much you actually use this. Now if you, you know, you, you figure you're only going to need one, pro, you know, one project or two projects, then I would suggest just renting one, um, you know, because it's 5000 My look on it was, uh, at my age, I'm planning on having this tractor a long time, it will pay for itself. Um, I do it, I use it a lot, um, and it's just worth it to me. Um, there's not really much to go wrong with it as long as you keep your hoses in good shape, your cylinders. 
Uh, this tractor I keep inside all the time, so I'm not really worried about it being out in the weather. Um, and when you pop it off, we're going to do another video on how to remove and hook up to the backhoe. Um, getting it off literally takes two minutes, if that. Hooking up, it's a little different story. Uh, we'll go through that on another video. Um, but I've got it down now. The first time took us probably close to 30 minutes. Um, now I can usually hook it up between 7 and 10 minutes. I can have it hooked back up and ready to go, or a little less. So on the backhoe, <clears throat> let me walk around. First of all, your seat. Now on the Royal King tractors, this is a dual seat. We don't have two seats, one for the backhoe, one for the tractor. So what you do, and this seat weighs about 60 to 65 pounds. So there's a lever right here. You lift up on it, lift up on the seat. As you're up, you start to spin it, and it drops right down. And you also still have your forward and back adjustment when you're in that position as well. But as you can see, it's got a pretty good platform. It's uh, You can adjust this forward and back for the backhoe, which is nice. Um, and that's how you adjust the seat around. Come to the operator platform, you have your downriggers. Uh, these will go down or up. You have your left and right and your boom up and down right here. This one is your stick out here on the end. And then back and forth with this one is your curl, your bucket. I can tell you uh, the little backhoes, obviously, I have a 1972 uh, Case 580B. Um, it's an older machine, obviously, but these little backhoes are not made to do what backhoe backhoes do. These are made for light work, uh, French drains, uh, digging a small ditch. You know, I, I, I've dug probably close to 300 feet of ditch with this so far, uh, just on two different projects. Um, it digs very well. It handles rock very well. We had uh, I have a camp in Porter County, um, and it does very well digging through rocky soil. Um, so it does handle it very well. It has a lot of power for for being a small backhoe. Uh, you have to run the RPMs about 2,500 um, to get it to, to really dig deep. Um, but that's on all these subcompacts. That's pretty much what you have to do. Um, so the operating platform, when you get on it, you put your feet down here. There's plenty of room. You'll see a little bit uh, sometimes um, whenever I'm running it. that uh, my son Bryson, he, you know, he, Daddy, I want to help, you know, so I'll idle it down and I'll let him stand right here. I'll keep my hands on him and I let him run just a, just a, a little bit of the, uh, of the stick and everything. I'm very careful with him, but he, he loves to do this stuff. Um, he can actually run the back by himself. He's uh, about three and a half years old. He loves it. Um, and this is, as I said, this is a family thing. It's going to be a family channel. Um, so you'll see him from time to time uh, on the tractor, uh, always with me, but he's on the tractor. Okay, so the backhoe itself sits, this is a frame mounted backhoe. Some backhoes that you see are um, mounted on the three point uh, hitch system. This is not. This is all, most of the subcompacts that I've seen, um, like 25, 30 horsepower, they all mount to the frame. Down on the back side of the frame here, on the outside, you will see that there is a, a angle iron that goes across the whole way, and it's got a pin on it. This, uh, the mounting frame to the backhoe, has a C-cut in it on both sides. So what you do is it just clamps on there, you use the backhoe to lift it up, it pivots this up, and these two pins right here are what pin it at the top. Um, and usually um, you can pull these right out once you go to unload as soon as you put the arms down there's very little pressure on these two pins all the weight and the pressure of the backhoe is down actually on the frame itself now whenever you go to hook up to the backhoe you have obviously all your hoses down in here but as you can see a little bit right now until our next video when I take this off this is your PTO for the machine itself. Uh, the shaft is down and underneath there. Uh, so that's where you'll hook up. Your three-point arms always stay on the machine. 
even with the backhoe on. If you look back behind here, you will see your three points. They have a piece of metal that goes across it, pins them under, and they kind of just hang under there. The downside to that is if you go up any kind of onto a trailer or anything, they do kind of drag. Um, but I leave them on there all the time. So then when I take the backhoe off, we'll do that. I'll video it. I'll show you the bracket and how you take it on and off. It's Okay, so they put these brackets on the uh, backhoe. Um, this is where, whenever I bought the machine, they had the, uh, the three-point arms, uh, the down arms, the down riggers arms uh, that hold your bottom uh, two arms for your three point just hanging on here. This is like a storage bracket. This is your actual three point from the tractor itself. Um, whenever you put the back on, I always retract them up so they stay up out of the way. But you'll put your down arms onto here and then they go down and pin onto your lower arms and that's what gives you your uh, rise and lower uh, for the three point. The last thing I wanted to show you on this machine is right here. This is a rear remote. Um, I can tell you uh, at least the tractors that I looked at, uh, rear remotes are not standard. For Royal King, they are standard. They come with one set of rear remotes in the work light. Your rear remote is right here is your lever. Um, it's right up in front. You just lift up or lift down, which would be nice for a dump cart on the back or any kind of, you know, if you have a log splitter that you're hooking up and you want to hook up to these lines, you can adjust and run it right here. Um, I did like that. That was one thing, and I know these options are $800 to $1,000 on the other units. Um, so that was another thing that one of the other options that they give you standard on a Royal King. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you about um, is uh, another standard option with the Royal Kings that is usually an, a, an additional cost for the other makes and models that I've seen. Uh, is your mechanical thumb. It's not a hydraulic, it's just mechanical. But if you're picking up boulders um, or anything, you know, large that you want to grab, um, this does work, um, but I can tell you just for personal knowledge for, with this machine, since I got the grapple for this machine, I very rarely use this. Um, because you have to get off, you have to pull the pins, you have to lower it down, put the pins back in, grab what you're uh, grabbing, move it around, then come back up and then I, you have to pin it back up to get it out of the way if you're digging. So I can tell you I've only used this one time and it was just to make sure I knew how the function of the machine was and how it worked. Um, it did work well, but like I said, you're more or less at the mercy of whatever this boom will reach. Um, and uh, some of the guys I've seen them, they grab it and then they pull the boom up and then they get back on the tractor and take it to wherever they're going. If you don't have the grapple option, um, that is definitely a viable option that, that you would have that comes standard on this machine. Um, however, like I said, for my for, for my purposes, I have only used this one time. Uh, but this, this does come standard uh, on these. This is uh, option on a lot of the other ones. Um, and I do believe they're they were coming out with a hydraulic option for this. You can hook into your uh, hydraulics as a third function. But um, like I said, since I got the grapple, I don't need that. So more or less, this is the machine. Um, I purchased it in March of, of this year uh, before everything hit and the country shut down. Um, so I've been doing a lot of outside work, um, doing a lot of uh, projects, and I couldn't be more happier with this machine. I did the 50 hour maintenance. Um, it, it was very relatively easy. I'm at 112, so I'm going to do 150 hour maintenance um, that I'll do a video on. <clears throat> so one other thing that I wanted to mention um, on the, most of these subcompacts, um, I was always, as I was growing up, if, if uh, hydraulics leaked down, it meant you had a leak in the system. On these little subcompacts, no matter what you do, no leaks in the system, brand new, they still leak off because of the hydraulics and how they're set up on these machines. So if I take the tractor and I put it, I put it away for four or five days, I come back, these downriggers usually drain off a few inches. The backhoe will be down, sitting on the ground. Um, it leaks off. Um, as soon as you fire it up, pull it up, it stays up. That, that's not the issue, but they do leak off on these little machines. So to combat that, what uh, Royal King did, and I'm sure a lot of the other um, manufacturers did also, is they put a pin right back here in the back. This is your left and right uh, pin 
uh, it goes down through you pin it and that keeps uh, the back o from swinging if you're hauling it trailering it and then this pin right here keeps the boom from going down so I always just leave it pinned until I'm ready to use the back o, and then that way there I never have to worry about this draining off or being down low so there's a pin here and a pin here and that this is your left and right and this is your up and down of the of the boom itself and that keeps it all um, up and in the right position so that's kind of the end of the video um, I hoped it was informative a lot of the channels like I said I couldn't find a lot on the RK I like to do research before I buy something I did it for almost a year I looked at all the different brands <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> this is was the best option for my family I'm not saying this is the best option for your family this is just an option um, so if you'd like these videos um, if you want to see more um, please hit the like button subscribe and leave a comment down below on what you have um, like I said we're not brand specific here this is just what I have um, I drive all kinds of machines it doesn't really matter to me um, and you know there's people that like certain kind of tractors and that's fine um, but please be kind on my channel um, we, we do not discriminate with any kind of different kind of tractors um, but we're going to do a lot of work with this we're going to take video of this thing <coughs> actually being put through its paces um, I've put it through some paces already and I can tell you right now I'm pretty impressed with what it'll do um, I call it a little it, it's it's pretty much bulletproof it's like a little tank um, now granted it only has 112 hours on it so you know as we go on this journey my family and your family together uh, we'll find out what it'll do what you know any problems that I have with it um, like I said I give the goods and the bads um, I'm fair across the board just because this is my tractor if something happens I'm gonna let you guys know about it so maybe it's something that might sway you one way or the other may not that's for you to make that decision so if you like the video please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below